if you don't have any other reason today, you have that reason to give God praise today. There is not one that compares to the love of Jesus. No, not one. Join us this morning in our hymn of celebration, page 217. No, not one.
it, we open up worship today with prayer. Many saw yesterday the world is back at war. And people are testing out missiles and whatever else is going on. And this nation fighting that nation. Does that mean we're at the end of the world? I don't think so because the Bible says there'll be wars and rumors of wars. We're just continuing in that evil. So we open up today with a special prayer for peace. World peace, yes, but also peace in this country. We haven't shot any missiles at each other in this country, but we've shot a whole lot of evil at each other. Whole lot of evil. So we pray for world peace, we pray for peace in this nation, but we also pray for peace within families. Because there are some families that are wrestling with war within the family. We open with prayer for peace, and we open the altar this morning. If you'd like to come, pray for your family. If you want to come, pray for another family or pray for another situation. There's power in prayer. And there's power when we call upon the God who still rules and the God who still has all power and the God who still can bring peace out of confusion. I get great consolation when I pray. Prayer can give you strength. Prayer can give you courage. Prayer can help you guide your family. Prayer can help you navigate through issues that come in your life. Whatever it is today, tell God about it. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour of prayer. Father, we, <clears throat> we assemble here this morning with you on our minds. We assemble knowing that you brought us here that you kept us last night, that you watched over us while we didn't know we were in the world, that you caused our hearts not to miss a beat, that you caused our lungs to continue to pump the precious oxygen that we need to live that you woke us up this morning to see yet another day. Master, we acknowledge right now that already this morning, Lord, we've seen tender mercies. Tender mercies that could have come from nowhere but you. It's you, Lord, who brought us to this sanctuary. Gave us a mind, Lord, to say thank you. So, Lord, we thank you right now. If we don't do anything else, Lord, we're going to thank you right now in the midst of all that we see all that we face lord we still say thank you lord we come assembled around this altar some for one reason and some for yet another some with troubled minds some with broken spirits some, Lord, feeling the pain of grief. Some, Lord, having been abused. Some struggling with financial difficulty, with relationship problems. Some, Lord, just trying to find their way in this mean and unfriendly world. 
Father, I ask that you would move, first of all, around this altar right now. Lord, you see every situation that's before you. So, Lord, we don't pretend to tell you what to do. We just ask, Master, that you would visit every situation, Lord. Make your presence known, Lord. Whatever they are struggling with, Lord, help them to remember that you and you alone are God. Nothing comes past you, Lord, that you don't allow. And whatever it is that they are struggling with, Lord, you've designed it, Lord, and you will bring them through it and out of it. Help them to hold on, Lord. Master, we, we pray for peace in this world. Master, all around the globe, there's conflict. All around the globe, Lord, men have decided that they can't get along with each other. Men have decided, Lord, that they have a, ha a hand in the outcome of this world. So, Mark, Master, I ask that you would give mankind a spirit of peace. Give us, Lord, the ability. Give us the desire, Lord, to live peacefully in this world together. That's what you call us to do. So give us, Lord, the ability to do that. Master, these are difficult times. These are troubled times. And Father, sometimes we just don't know what to do. But Lord, we lean on your goodness, your mercy, your faithfulness right now. Father, we thank you, Master, that you didn't leave it up to us to figure out a way to get to you, Lord. You made a way for us back to you through your son, Jesus. Lord, we thank you for that way. We thank you, Lord, for the foresight, knowing, Master, that we couldn't do it. But, Lord, your love for us required that we get back to you. So we thank you, Lord. Lord, watch over this, this congregation. Help us, Lord, to remember that you are the reason that we're here. Help us, Lord, to remember that nothing happens unless you allow your grace and mercy to cause it to happen. Help us, Lord, to focus on you. Let you be our guiding light. Forgive us, Lord, for the areas where we fall short. We confess, Master, that we're sinners, saved by your grace. We ask, Lord, that you would help us, Master, to not sin against you. Help us, Lord, to remember, Master, that when others have trespassed against us, Lord, they need the same forgiveness from us that we need from you. So give us forgiving spirits, Lord. Help us to forget what happened yesterday. It's gone. Help us to remember, Lord, that you've promised of a future. We ask now that you'd watch over us, that you would keep us, Master, in your care. Keep us in your will and in your love. It's in the precious name of Jesus that we pray and give thanks. Amen. an awesome God. We serve the Prince of Peace. Amen. Amen. God is a faithful God. God is seeking a faithful people. As we have returned unto our seats, let us open up our word. You do have the word. Amen. Amen. It's a living word. It's a word that will bring us life and allow us to endure during these difficult times. Our scripture for this morning reading will be found in the book of Isaiah, the sixth chapter. You don't stand to honor me, but you stand to honor God's word, amen. The sixth chapter, we were reading the first nine verses, reading from the New King James Version. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above it stood seraphim, each one had six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one cried to another and said, Holy, holy, Holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the post of the door was shaken by the voice of him who cried out. And the house was filled with smoke. 
So I said, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongues from this altar. And he touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your iniquity is taken away and your sin purged. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send and who will go for us? Then I said, here am I, send me. And he said, go and tell this people, keep on hearing, but do not understand. Keep on seeing, but do not perceive. God's word is blessed, and we are blessed in the hearing and obeying of it. Amen. You may be seated. for praise and worship. I know you just sat down, but if you could just stand back on up. <laughs> those who are able, those who are willing, stand up and give God some praise. Praise and worship. Come on. If you know the Lord is wondering, stand on your feet.
EBC family and friends. I am Savon Cruz and I'm excited to share our EBC news and announcements with you today. As most of us know, today is Youth Church and we have a service just for our youth to learn more about their faith and meet new friends their age. All youth grades K-12 are invited to join us in the multi-purpose room for this special worship service just for the youth. As a youth volunteer myself, second and fourth Sundays are truly a treat for our youth as they can be truly transparent with themselves, other volunteers, and even their peers about their relationship with God. So parents, remember every second and fourth Sunday multi-purpose room just for your youth. Next Saturday, we have something lined up for everyone in the family. Beginning at 8 a.m. on Saturday, April 20th, our men's ministry and University City UMC will host a men's fellowship breakfast. All men are invited for this dynamic fellowship. Scan the QR code on the screen to RSVP by Wednesday, April 17th. How many of you have your calendars marked for a year of celebration in one afternoon. Right here in our parking lot on April 20th, we will celebrate our pastor's 27th anniversary through each month of the year and 12 of his favorite things. This event is for the entire family, so bring everyone out. Then on Sunday, April 21st at 1045 a.m., guest speaker Reverend Reginald Sharp, Jr., Senior Pastor of Fellowship Missionary Baptist Church, Chicago, Illinois, will render services as we wrap up Dr. Lynch's 27th pastoral anniversary weekend. On Saturday, April 27th, from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., join us here for a community public forum, Human Trafficking. Let's talk about it. How can we help and be aware? This event is open to the public. We encourage everyone to attend, parents, family members, school counselors, social workers, and volunteers. During this week and beyond, please take the time to focus on the topic, not the panelists. This topic is critical for the community and non-political. Come out and gain more information and resources and ask questions. The past few Sundays, we have heard about our World Vision Global 6K Water Walk hosted by our EBC Missions Ministry on Saturday, May 18th. For the month of February and March, we had two winners for this 6K Early Registration Monthly Drawing. Let's give a round of applause for Carol Downing and Delphine Williams. Check-in on May 18th will begin at 7.30 a.m. and the walk begins at 8 a.m. This is another event held right here at EBC in the parking lot. Walkers of all ages are needed. Help us achieve our goal of raising $3,500 towards helping families across the globe, including EBC-sponsored families in Rwanda, to have access to clean water. So, EBC family, has your I Love My Church t-shirt gone missing? Is your I Love My T-shirt on its last leg from being in the laundry? No worries. We will have four on-site sale and pickup dates. Get your T-shirt for fifth Sunday in June, June 30th. Remember, we have three colors available at only $10 each. So go ahead and order your shirt by scanning the QR code. All right, EBC, that has been my time for this morning. Dynamic works are definitely upon us, and I'm so excited to see the continued dynamic growth here at Ebenezer. EBC family, have a blessed week, and see you next time. Good morning, Ebenezer. Good morning, good morning. To all who are watching virtually and to all who are here with us in the sanctuary. Do we have any first time visitors here today? If so, would you please stand and remain standing? Any first time visitors? <laughs> welcome, welcome, welcome. Amen, amen. We have a special message through song for you. Please remain standing, a gift bag is on the way also.
Amen, amen. Just a few brief announcements. Sympathy is extended upon the passing of the mother of Margaret Ross and Lou Ann Gaston. Their mother's funeral will be held this Friday, Greater Galilee, the family hour at noon and the funeral at 1 p.m. We have received another call from one of our mission partners, our Ebenezer Mission Ministry. We have many partners we are connected with. This call said we have two pallets of potatoes. Amen. So when you leave worship today, on your way out of the parking lot at the rear exit, stop and pick up a bag or two until they give out. Amen. Two pallets of potatoes from one of our farming partners. Amen. Amen. The parking lot project will begin Monday, April the 22nd. That's Monday week. So we need your prayers. Here's what has to happen. From the street all the way to the back, they will dig up the parking lot. The asphalt has to come up. The gravel has to come up. They've got to grade it and start packing gravel again. It's going to be done in phases. So for the next few Sundays, we'll have Sneaker Sunday. Because as I said last Sunday, we cannot afford to replace your red bottom shoes and what other designers that you wear. And, um, so that, and we want everybody to be comfortable anyway when you come to church. Amen. So we'll be with Sneaker Sunday. We'll also have people in the parking lot because... It'll be a minute before they get everything put back and the lines painted. So you remember how when you would go to the home church and homecoming and they have somebody on the, as they say, on the yard, parking cars? We'll have that again. Amen. So we need your patience because you usually park over here and over here might be full, so you got to park over there. Positive flexibility. Amen. We don't want the parking lot to take your religion before you get inside. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We prepare now for the, our offering, the presentation of his tithes and of our offerings. God has blessed us in a powerful way, in a simple way. And I've got a question for you. When God blesses you, out of our love for God, is it right for us to return unto him what he's asked of us? Amen. 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 I ask that you would look at your offering envelope, look on your device, look at the amount you have prepared to give for your tithes. Does this truly represent your true tithe? And does this represent what we should return unto God. Now, if God has blessed us and you trust God, I would ask that we would stay in spiritual order in line with the word of God upon the first day of the week that we bring our tithes into the storehouse. And God gives a promise, I'll bless you beyond your wildest imagination. I'll bless you in more ways than you can even dream of. Tithing is God's plan for our spiritual survival. I want to thank those who are currently tithers, and I want to challenge those who are still praying over your financial relationship with God. Today is a great day to give God a try. Are there any witnesses that God keeps his promise and God keeps his word? that tithing does work, amen. So if you will prepare your offering, if you have an envelope, if you're giving with technology, if you'll get that we're gonna hold our phones up or whatever device you have as we make preparations to pray. Before we pray, there are five ways to give. They're gonna put this on the screen. You can give here in the sanctuary. You can give on our website. You can text to give, the number's there for us. You can mail in your offerings, the address is provided, or our secure giving app. 
download the app, and you can give in that way. Amen? Let us lift our tithes unto the Lord as we ask God's blessing in our lives. Our dear Heavenly Father, we stand today in spiritual obedience to your word. We ask, Master, that you would bless the gift and bless the giver, and then guide us as we use these funds to build your kingdom here on earth. In the matchless name of our Christ, who gave his very life, we pray, amen. amen. At the end of the pew, on your right, on the floor, is a white basket. If you pick up the basket, if you place your tithes in the basket and smile as you pass the basket down the aisle, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. Amen? Amen. Our music ministry will carry us further at this time.
Lord, we love you. Lord, we praise you. Lord, we thank you for everything that you have done. You have given it all to us. And we are grateful, God. We love you. If you came to love on God, let me hear If you came to love on God, call out to the Father. If you came to love on God, say thank you, Jesus. If you came to love on God, say hallelujah. If you came to love on God, I don't know about you, but I came to love on God. I don't know about you, but I'm thankful for him. I don't know about you, but I'm grateful today. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Jesus, I love you. No matter the situation, I love you. No matter the circumstance, God, I love you. Hallelujah.
church say amen. The church say amen. The church say amen. 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 He's worthy of all the praise. Worthy of all the honor. Worthy of all the glory. Amen.
praise in here today. This is a moment. Give God some praise today. This is a moment. Don't miss this moment. Give God some praise. This is a moment. Don't miss this moment. If you're waiting on him to answer a prayer, don't miss this moment. If you're waiting on him to call on you, don't miss this moment. Praise his name while you have a chance. Don't miss this moment. This is a moment. scripture that was read a moment ago came from the Old Testament book of Isaiah. I would ask that you'd read the entire chapter, chapter 6. I want to lift just the opening verses. Isaiah chapter 6 opens with a declaration, a discovery in Isaiah's life. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord. Amen. I want to talk about God still working in the darkness. God is still working in the darkness. Life gets dark. Yesterday, war broke out again. I turned on the news, they were shooting off missiles like it was the 4th of July. And everywhere one landed, that affected some lives. Life gets dark. A few days ago, fascination with the eclipse that was passing by. Everybody had to see. It's going to get dark at a certain moment. Not just the war and not just the eclipse. In our lives, darkness shows up. You can't take darkness personal. Darkness covers The earth covers families, covers lives, covers individuals. Don't take it personally. The other point is this, you're not the only one ever faced the darkness. Now when it gets dark, it feels like nobody going through it but you. When it, when, when trauma hits, when life hits, when difficulty lands in your life like a bomb, it feels like everybody else doing fine. You're not the only one. If we had time today, pass this mic around this sanctuary and let one testify after another about the darkness they have been in or the darkness they're in right now. 
you will be surprised at what others are going through. Can't take darkness personal. You're not the only one going through darkness. But here's the main point I'm after. I'm not going to be long today. God still works in the darkness. It is interesting as we grow, babies, children often need a night light somewhere in the room so that they can sleep and they can stay kind of balanced. Here's the thing about a night light. It's not just for the little children. <laughs> Sometimes we as tall children, <laughs> we need one too. Because when you find yourself in total darkness, it has a different effect on you. When you get where you are in total darkness, it will shake you. Life gets dark. Sometimes situations come upon us and brings darkness, sickness, Divorce, job loss, other issues, other tragedies come upon us and we find ourselves in darkness. And we didn't sin for it, but darkness can be like bad company that come visit and don't know when to leave. <laughs> but sometimes, our choices put us in darkness. Sometimes we make the wrong decision. Sometimes we make the wrong choice. That's called life. Because sometimes on this journey, and I've said it across the years, there are days when right and wrong look like twins. Isaiah is testifying about his calling from God to serve God as a prophet. He marks the event, not with the year. He does not say in 597, God called me. He says in the year King Uzziah died. That was a dark year for the people. Who was King Uzziah? Uzziah was the king that was ruling. Government was doing well. Times were doing good. The economy was on a rise. People had plenty. People were happy. Things were rolling well under King Uzziah. But Uzziah got confused with his office downtown and his place in the temple. His confusion was he thought because he was a big shot downtown, when he came in the house of God, he was also a big shot. Here's what he missed. When you come in God's house, there are no big shots, there are no little shots. It's just shots. All land is level at the cross. So when we come in God's house, in God's presence, we abandon whatever rank we have in the world. When we come in God's house, in God's presence, 18-page resume, fine. When you come in God's house, is one soul standing before a merciful God. Uzziah got that twisted up. So he came to worship, and this is in the Old Testament, so worship was different in the fact that the priest on duty would go into what was known as the Holy of Holies. In the temple, there was a veil that covered, there was a curtain across the front of the temple. Behind the curtain, it was called the Holy 
of holies. Back there is where the altar was located. Back there was where the mercy seat was located. The mercy seat was a little ledge on the back wall. Sitting on the ledge was the ark, was a trunk, in which inside that ark, they had Moses' rod, they had the Ten Commandments, they had some manna from when they were in the wilderness. All this is back there. So the priest on duty was the only one, according to the biblical law, when it was his turn, could go back in the Holy of Holies. You just didn't ramble back there. Scripture said, if you went there and you weren't supposed to be there, you break out in leprosy. Here comes Uzziah. Priest not going fast enough for him. Uzziah said, I got things to do, places to go, people to see. What's the term I hear now? Big baller, shot caller? That was him. I'll offer my own sacrifice. So here he goes, back behind the curtain, behind the veil, just as scripture said, leprosy got him. Now here's the thing about it. You can't play with God. God is not a play toy. If you want to Something to play with, go on Amazon and order you some toys, but don't play with God. Uzziah, king and everything, but he broke out in leprosy. So while he's sick, they had to quarantine him. He couldn't rule. He couldn't have full access. While he's quarantined with leprosy, government got corrupt. Folks start stealing. Money got missing. Economy goes bad. Morale gets low, and during this time of his sickness, things are going from bad to worse. At its worst point was during the time when he died. So here comes Isaiah saying, I came to the house of God. Some scholars believe mourning the death of King Uzziah. Some scholars have wondered if Isaiah was in the royal family, might have been a cousin to King Uzziah. He said, when I got in the temple that day, it's dark, darkness over the nation, darkness over his life. But in the darkness, I saw the Lord. We get afraid of darkness. God not scared about darkness. God created darkness. He can move in darkness. He can work in darkness. He can handle your darkness. He can handle whatever situation has come upon our lives. In the year that King Uzziah died, God was moving. Now, I don't think this was the first time God was moving in God's house. I do think it was the first time Isaiah saw God moving in God's house. Because you can be in the house of God. And God can move and you miss it. You can be in the house of God and God show up and you miss it. All right, let me put it like this. Folk have come to your house and didn't see you. Doorbell ring. Who is it? Somebody go to that window that you got. Everybody got a window. You can look out, and they can't see you. It's so-and-so. Lord have mercy. You get up and go to the back room. They let so-and-so in the front room. They sit and talk with so-and-so. Is so-and-so here? They, they, they went to lay down. They're not doing good. They weren't feeling good. Well, tell them I came by. All right. And they get up and leave. They came to your house and never saw you. You can come in the house of God and not see God. Isaiah came that day. And that day, he saw him. I saw the Lord high lifted up 
The robe of his train filled the temple. The angels were flying around singing in worship, holy, holy, holy. The whole earth is full of his glory. I looked up. I saw God moving. I saw God at work. But Isaiah said something happened to me when I saw him. And here's the thing about worship. When worship is real and worship is right, something happens to you. There's a transforming element in worship. There's a transforming power in worship. Isaiah said, I saw God. My eyes got adjusted. I saw God, then I got clarity. I saw myself. I saw the Lord. I said, I'm a man of unclean lips. I saw myself. Then I saw the crowd I was running with. I'm a man of unclean lips and the crowd that I'm hanging out with ain't no better. You see, here's the thing about worship. Worship balances out your ego. Talking about true worship. Not talking about being in the building when worship is taking place because you can be here as a spectator and never participate in worship. And you can sit and look and watch and see everything that happened and miss God and leave the same way you came. But if you come to worship and you open your heart and open your soul, worship, what is worship? Worship is when the created us make contact with the creator, God. That's worship. When we close out the noise and distractions of this world, when we're not looking at who's sitting over there, what they got on, who came in, what happened, who, when we focus on God and God alone and we make contact with God and the Holy Spirit makes contact with us, that's true worship. You've seen, and I have seen, folk come to the house of God, and worship is real, and they get off drugs without a 12-step program. They get off other addictions without other programs. Now, Folk go through what everybody need to go through, what they need to. But I've seen folk, you know what we call it? Getting delivered. That's old, that's old church talk. When you've been wrestling with something and something been wrestling with you, and whatever you've been wrestling with got you pinned to the ground and you can't get up. But when you show up in the house of God, the Holy Spirit will take that addiction off of you, give you power to walk in God's power and walk in God's peace. Worship. Isaiah said, I saw myself. But then he said, my eyes got straightened out, but then my hearing got right. I heard God speaking. I don't think it was the first time God had been speaking in church. I think it's the first time Isaiah heard God speak. Who shall go for us? Who can I send? I say, Isaiah said, here am I, send me. What's going on, Isaiah? He's hearing God. He's seeing God. He's getting connected to God, and he's allowing God to direct his steps. I'll go where you need me to go. I'll do what you need me to do. I'll say what you need me to say. I'll act as you need me to act. I'm yours, Lord. Everything I got, everything I am, everything I'm not, I'm yours, Lord. Try me now and see. I'm yours, Lord. That's worship. Somebody's coming here today in darkness. Somebody's watching virtually today in darkness, and you're trying to figure out how you can come out of the darkness. It's hard to get out of darkness by yourself. So the question of worship is, does God deliver from darkness? 
The question of worship is, when my family is in trouble, can God lift my family back up? The question of worship, when my life is in trouble, can God lift my life back up? The question of worship is, when I'm sinking down and can't figure out how I'm going to come back up, does God have the power to lift me out of this darkness? Here's the good news. Yes, God works in darkness. Yes, God delivers from darkness. Yes, God can lift you out of darkness. Yes, God can transform your life out of a dark situation. Yes, God can give you the power you need to come out of darkness. Yes, God can guide your footsteps around the landmines and around the traps folk have set to get you out of the situation that you're in and get you back where God wants you to be. Yes, God still works. Yes, God still moves. Yes, God still delivers. Yes, God still sets free. Yes, God still transforms. Somebody here today, you came in darkness. Somebody here today, you started watching on live stream and your life has been in darkness. The pulpit declares you don't have to stay in the shape that you're in. The potter wants to put you back together again. Ye who are broken, God wants to renew you. You don't have to stay in the darkness. Today, if your life has been in darkness, God has made a way out for you. That's what we celebrate so often when we talk about what Christ has done for us. Christ came down from heaven to this earth to bring light into our darkness. And if you're in darkness today, all you got to do is let this Christ in. If you're in darkness right now, all you got to do is accept this Christ as your Lord and your Savior. If you're facing darkness right now, all you got to do is open your heart and let this Christ come in. Christ is the light of the world. Jesus is the light of our soul. Jesus is the light on our pathway. Jesus is the light in our family. Jesus is the light in our home. Walk in the light. Beautiful, beautiful light. Come where the dewdrops of mercy shine bright. Shine all around me. Shine in my home. Shine over my family. Shine in my soul. Jesus, the light of the world. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light. Beautiful, beautiful light. Come where the dewdrop of mercy shine bright. Shine all around me. Shine. Jesus, Jesus, the light, Jesus, the way, Jesus, my joy, Jesus, my strength, Jesus, my peace, Jesus, my hope, Jesus, my power, Jesus, my glory, Jesus, do you know him? Jesus, have you tried him? 
Jesus, 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 the light of the world, shine in my home, shine on my job, shine on our children, shine on our family, shine on my darkness, Jesus, 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 the light, 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 Jesus, 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 the light, the light, the light, the light, the light, Jesus. Have you tried him? Do you know him for yourself? Have you tried him? Is there anybody here that's a witness? He'll pick you up. He'll turn you around. He'll give you joy. He'll give you strength. He'll make a way. He'll make a way. He'll open doors. Jesus. of God stands open. The door of the house of God stands open. There may be someone watching virtually. You need this light in your life. The door stands open. If you're here today and you need this Christ in your life, we offer Christ to you. If you need a church home, we offer this home to you. Don't leave this place the same way you came. If there's one here today, if you've already accepted Christ, I need you to be in prayer for the soul next to you. Christ's love is available. Christ's peace is available. His mercy is available. His forgiveness is available. His joy. You don't have to struggle like you've been struggling. Don't have to agonize like you've been agonizing. This Christ is available right now. If you're watching virtually, they're going to put on the screen how you can join. If you're watching virtually, you can go website and click join and the church will be in contact with you. Don't leave this place without God on your side. Be that one to come. You're never too far from God. Wherever you are, move out of your seat. If anybody asks you where you're going, say, I'm going to live with God. Somebody ought to come today. We'll walk with you. That's right. We'll walk with you. It's the best choice, I promise you. 
Amen. That's right. That's right. Come on. Come on. God bless you today. God bless you today. Amen. Amen. Well. ready for prayer if even at the close of this worship you're ready to make that step it's not too late you can see any one of us up here we'll get you connected don't let the day close and you and God aren't where you need to be the door stands open but God never closes the door once God opened that door at Calvary, the door's been standing open for souls to come to him. Amen. It's prayer time now as we make preparation to move from this mountain of privilege. We do so together at this altar. Prayer can change your life. Prayer can give you insight and courage that you need to make it through. Prayer can give you the power to start over again. The altar's now open. The altar's now open.
For prayer to be effective, a few things have to happen. We have to give God total surrender. And we have to confess to God, Lord, I've been trying to fix it, but I'm about to make it worse. So I'm going to put it in your hands. And at the end of the prayer, for prayer to work, once you put it in God's hand, don't take it back and carry it with you again. Leave it at the altar. Our dear Heavenly Father, our everlasting Lord, and our everlasting God, we gather today not as strangers, we come as your servants, your children, your sons, your daughters. We call upon you, Lord, to say thank you. Thank you for being God all by yourself. Thank you for walking with us and keeping us, guiding us, holding our head up when the world got heavy on our shoulders. Thank you for holding our families together when storms hit our homes. Thank you, Lord, for bringing peace within our souls when our souls were troubled and we didn't know which way to turn. Here we are, Lord. We've gathered at this altar, in this sanctuary, and Lord, we're at our altar in our virtual sanctuaries. Touch, heal, deliver, and set free. Touch, heal, deliver, and set free. Lord, somebody's sick, can't get well. Touch where the doctor can't reach. Move where medicine has no power. Lord, there's a marriage in trouble touch as only you can touch. Lord, someone's son has wandered, someone's daughter has wandered. Touch as only you can touch. Walk around this altar. Every soul that stands in the need, we stand before you. We are putting our hope in you. We are putting our confidence in you. We are putting our trust in you and you alone. Have your way in our lives. And Master, we ask right now that you will go ahead of us and work some things out. Someone's worried about situations coming up this week. I don't know, Lord, but I don't have to know. You know go ahead of them in the same way you went ahead and rolled that stone away go ahead in their lives and move stones out of their way father thank you for the souls that have come today in response to the gospel of Jesus Christ nurture these souls and protect and grow these souls into strong disciples Master, as we make preparation to leave this place, but never your presence, go with us into our homes. Go with us to where we live. Go with us in our jobs. Go with us as we travel. And 
Father, we ask right now that you would guide us and keep us on our journey. And Master, we'll be so careful to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of worship. Thank you for meeting us in this place. Thank you for all you've done through worship. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling, to present us on that day with great joy, be dominion, power, glory, hence now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. God bless and go in peace.